Thank you, students. Allow me to greet you and say shalom. Uh, this is uh, another video once again on the topic of asset disposal. And I wrote it so that we can know from the beginning that we are on the disposal of an asset. And this was for a class test in the year 2014 for those uh, who are in the institution that I teach. So now we, um, I have question one, which is out of 28 marks in this question. And there was also question two in this question. And question two is a very short question, which is only out of two marks. Uh, perhaps due to time constraints or time limit, I might not be able to reach to question two and also because of the simplicity of question two is very easy just calculating cost to be capitalized so now uh, before i do anything in question one i want to first start with the requirements because that is the approach i always recommend to students know what you are required as you are reading the information requirement number a says we must calculate the accumulated depreciation for machinery on the 1st of January in the year 2013. Remember, 1st of January is likely to be the opening or the first day of the accounting period, meaning the opening balances uh, that were carried uh, forth from the 31st of December 2012, which became opening balance on the 1st of January 2013. Now we are then required to calculate the carrying amount of vehicle X on the 31st of December in the year 2013. So now we also need that carrying amount. Record then after all the general entries related to vehicles transactions for the years 2012 and 2013. So we have to record entries for vehicles in the year 2012 and 2013, general entries. Then we are then to prepare the asset disposal of machinery A. Asset disposal of machinery A. Then after prepare the property plant and equipment note as at 31st of December in the year 2013. So now in the question of asset disposal, uh, the main focus that I always recommend for students or the main approach that I always recommend students to use is that of focusing on the asset that was disposed. Then after focusing on the asset that was disposed, they record all the entries or all the or calculate all the amounts that relate to the asset that was disposed. Then after we do the property plan and equipment for all the other assets, including the one that was disposed, then after we can follow and do all other requirements. So meaning my approach will be mainly focusing on this asset, which is the machine that was disposed, machine A. Then after from machine A, we can immediately do the property plant and equipment note at 31st of December 2013. And now this property plant and equipment note, which we sometimes call PPE, will be for the disposed machine for and also the vehicles uh, that were bought and perhaps uh, uh, were bought during the year because there was no disposal of vehicles during the year. So now this will be my main focus, my number one, my number two. Then I will go to the rest of the questions uh, after I've completed my property, plant and equipment or after I've done the asset disposal. So now my main focus is on the machine that was disposed as I will be reading throughout the information that is provided to us. Question one says the following information was extracted from the trial balance of Carpaco traders at 31st of December in the year 2013 December. Then we are given the extract from the trial balance, which is the machinery at the cost price and the total is 1270000 And we are given vehicles X at the cost of 500000 So now these are the costs of the asset at 31st of December 2013. And what we yet don't know if 
Was there any machine that was bought during the year? Or was there any vehicle that was bought during the year? Then if there was some machine that was bought and vehicle that was bought, is that machine or vehicle already included in this cost at the end of December in the year 2013? The assets that were bought during the year, are they already included in the total cost that we see in this total balance end of December 2013? That question is, is just important for it to, to ring in your mind so that as you read, you identify that. Additional information says machinery is depreciated using the straight line method and the balance shown above comprise of the following. So now the balance of the machine of 1,270,000 include machine A, which was bought at the cost of 850,000 on the 30th of June in the year 2009 with a residual value of 50,000 and a useful life of 10 years. So now we know that this machine was bought uh, six months before the end of the year 2009. Then they say another machine which is included in that 1,270,000 is machine B which was bought for a cost or at a cost of 420,000 at the end of March in the year 2010 with a residual value of 20,000 and a useful life of four years. Now I want to take into account the number of months as I did make mention to you that this first machine which was bought machine A at the end of June meaning the depreciation for the year 2009 will be only for six months that need to be taken into account. But for machine B that was bought at the 31st of March, therefore now we have to say April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. Meaning the depreciation for machine B in the year 2010, it will be for a period of nine months. That need to be taken into account is very important to note. However, useful life is four years and the residual value is 20,000 for machine B. Remember... The machine was machine that was sold, but let us leave that so far where it is. Number two says vehicles are depreciated at 20% per annum on the diminishing balance method. Then it says the vehicle X shown, the vehicle X shown, not vehicles, the vehicle X shown on the above drill balance was bought on the 30th of June in the year 2012. So now obviously in the year 2012, depreciation must have been calculated for a period of six months or must be calculated for a period of six months, which is July, August, September, October, November, December. Therefore now that depreciation for uh, uh, 2012 becomes opening balance of depreciation in the year 2013. Then we go to number three. Number three says on the 30th of June in the year 2013, meaning six months down the current year because we are in the 2013 financial period or accounting period. Vehicle Y was purchased for 250,000 cash. So now this was a purchase of the motor vehicle. And remember, there was a question that said we must record general interest with regard to vehicles. And it must be the year 2012 and the year 2013. So now we bought a vehicle in the year 2013 for 250,000 and this was for cash. Therefore now in the general entry that will be debit a vehicle or vehicles and credit bank which is cash. And they say this entry has not yet been recorded in the accounting records for the year ended 31st of December 2013. Meaning the 200,000 rents is not yet included in the cost of vehicle that we see in the trial balance above. That 500,000 does not include the 250,000 of the vehicle that was bought at the end of June 2013, meaning it was not yet accounted for. Then after we go to number four, and number four says, Machine A was disposed, take note, machine A was disposed, this should be our main focus point, that is where most of the calculation will be, 
on the 31st of December 2013 for cash. So now this was a cash disposal of this uh, machine at a loss of 90,000 rands. That means we sold this machine at a loss of 90,000 rands, meaning the carrying amount, in other words, that means the carrying amount or carrying value was uh, less than the selling price by 90,000. That's what this means. If you sell an asset uh, at a loss, meaning the selling price of that asset must have been less than the carrying amount. That is why we will make a loss because the value of the asset is the carrying amount or carrying value of the asset, however you call it. So now the carrying value must have been less than the selling price of the asset or the price at which the asset was sold by an amount of 90,000. So the difference between the, between the carrying amount and the selling price was 90 thousand rands very important information to note a new machine which is machine d was bought on the same date for seven hundred and fifty thousand rands so now at take note once again the disposal of the asset took place at the end of the current year so now it means we have to account for depreciation for the full year which is the full period of 12 months and now at the end of the year, there was another machine, which is machine D, that was bought in a substitute of machine A, I will assume. And this machine was bought on the same day, meaning on the same date, which is the 31st of December 2013. That means machine D will not be accounted for depreciation in the year 2013 because it was bought on the last day of the financial year 2013. Uh, these transactions have not yet been recorded in the accounting records for the year ended 31st of December 2013. Once again, this means uh, the 750,000 rands of machine D is not yet included in that amount of 1 million. 270,000 rands. Remember that 1,270,000 is the total of 850,000 plus 420,000, which is the two machines that we have. Let us say 850 plus 450 or 420, this will give us the total of 1,270,000 at the cost of the two machines A and B that were bought in the year 2009 and the year 2010, 31st of March. So now we, as I said to you that our main focus will be this bullet point. This will be our number one. Now in also answering that we will be, or in responding to that, we will be responding to question one because question one once the accumulated depreciation for machinery, meaning all the machine, on the 1st of January in the year 2013. So we need to know the total accumulated depreciation from the date the machines were bought, which is 30 June 2009, up until 31st of December in the year 2012. And the total accumulated depreciation up to the end of December becomes the opening balance on the 1st of January in the year 2013. So now we are looking for the total accumulated depreciation at the end of December for machine A and total accumulated depreciation at the end of December for machine B. Then we add both of them. That becomes the closing accumulated depreciation at the end of December 2012, which becomes opening balance in the first on the 1st of January in the year 2013. So now, hence, I'm saying to you that we will obviously be responding or giving an answer to the first question. Then after, we will do all other calculations that will follow. So now I would like to skip the first page so that I do my workings uh, on this page so that I will do the ledger accounts in that page. So now we start calculating uh, accumulated depreciation for machine A first. 
we need only machine A first. Then when we're done with machine A, then we will go to machine uh, B. We know that machine A was bought in the year 2000 and uh, confirm the year it was bought in the year 2009 on the 30th of June. And I told you that depreciation for the year 2009 will be for six months. Remember, the residual value is 50,000 and the useful life, it is 10 years of useful life. So now the cost is 850,000 and is on a straight line method. So this is for the year 2009. So we need to say cost minus the residual value. Whenever it's a straight line, we take into account the residual value. So now the cost of this machine is 810,50,000 rands minus the residual value of 50,000 rands. Therefore, now this will give us 800,000 rands, which that has to be divided by 10 years uh, of uh, useful life. Therefore, now this will give us an amount of 80,000 of depreciation for the full year. But we need it only for half of the year, for the year 2009. So now we times this by 6 over 12, then we get to depreciation for the year 2009 so we have 800,000 divide this by uh, 2 or times by 6 over 12 oh, sorry we have 800,000 divide by 10 first that gives us 80,000 times by 6 over 12 which you can also divide by 2 meaning depreciation for the year 2009 uh, must have been 40,000. So now we go to the year 2010. And the year 2010, now we don't have to go back and do all the calculations. We already have calculated what to call depreciable amount, meaning the amount at which depreciation will be calculated, which is cost minus residual value. So now we can just take that 800,000, which is the depreciable amount, and we divide this by 10 years and this will give us 80,000 rands. So now this will be depreciation for 2010. Remember, this is straight line method. 2011 depreciation will also be the same. But I just want to uh, do all these uh, short calculations that are simple so that we uh, understand the simplicity of this question. But you don't have to do this at all times, always calculating. You can just say times this by the number of years. So now in the year 2012, we will get to the same depreciation of 80,000. Then uh, 2012, it will be again 800,000, which we divide this by useful life of 10 years. And this will give us again 80,000 rands. So now we have to add this 80,000 for 20, uh, uh, 2010, 11, and 12 plus the 40,000 of 209 plus 80,000 plus 80,000 plus 80,000. And this gives us a total of 280,000 rands. This is accumulated depreciation. Total accumulated depreciation at the end of December. Total accumulated depreciation at 31st of December in the year 2012. So now this is only for machine A. We still have to go to machine B. And now I want to go and check if did we sell machine A or not so that I can account for depreciation for the current year. Remember, they said machine A was disposed at the end of December 2013, meaning at the end of the current year, this machine was sold. So now we still need to account for depreciation of this machine for the year 2013. And I'm changing the color of my pen because this will not be treated as an opening balance. Divide this by useful life of 10 years, and this gives us a total again of 80,000. 
So now this will be a depreciation for current year. I want to note that depreciation for the current year. So now our total uh, depreciation for this asset, which is machine A, will be a total of 280,000 rands plus another 80,000 rands for depreciation of the current year. And this will give us 360,000 rands. However, this is the main focus with regards to the first question that we are responding to. So now this will be an opening balance of accumulated depreciation on the 1st of January. January in the year 2013. This is an opening balance because if the closing balance end of December becomes opening balance January in the year 2013. So now, uh, the first machine has been covered, machine A. And now let me check uh, the date in which machine B was acquired. Also to estimate the space, machine B was bought in the year 2010, 31st of March. And we said from 31st of March until December, it will be a period of nine months. So now if it's nine months, which is May, June, July, August, September, October, November, uh, March or April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. So that is honestly nine months from April. So now we need to calculate uh, the depreciation once again for this machine, which is machine B. I think a uh, space will be enough for me here machine b and now we still need to say for the year 2010 we need to know the cost of this machine minus residual value for this machine and the residual value for this machine uh, will be residual value then after we say the cost for this machine was given to us as 420,000 rands and the residual value was 20,000 and the useful life was four years. So now meaning we have to get or we'll get to an amount of 400,000. We divide it by four years and whatever amount that we get which will obviously be 100,000 we have to multiply this by 9 months out of 12 months. So you can just multiply it by 0 0.75 because 9 over 12 is 0 0.75. Therefore, now this will give us depreciation for the year 2010. So now we say 400,000 divide by 4 times this by 9 over 12 which is 75,000 rands. So now depreciation for the year 2010 must have been 75,000. So for the year 2011, the depreciation will be not 75,000, but the depreciable amount. And I'm saying this again because depreciable amount can be asked. Depreciable amount is the cost minus the residual value, which is the depreciable amount of 400,000 rands. So now depreciation for the year 2011 will be 100,000 rands. And depreciation for the year 2012 will be again 100,000 rands. But I want to do all this calculation that seem to be boring to others who are the geniuses, which I know not to say anything, but is the reality. This is very simple stuff. Now we still, however, uh, need to go through the basics for those who still have to understand the topic who are not well vested with the knowledge of the subject. So now we have 275,000 rands, which is 75,000 plus 100,000 plus 100,000 will give us 275,000 rands. And again, this is total accumulated depreciation for machine A as at 31st of December in the year 2012. So now we need again to know depreciation 
for the year 20 now 12 or not 2013 because this machine b was not sold so now we have to say depreciation for the year 2013 for the year 2013 depreciation will still remain the same 400,000 rands because machine b was not sold divide this by four it will be 100,000 rands remember four is the useful life so now this is the depreciation for the current year then now this will give us the total accumulated depreciation up to the end of this year as 375,000 rands. So remember our main focus in response to the first question is the 275,000 rands. This is the main focus, 275,000 rands. <clears throat> so now uh, we, we have touched base on the two machines. Remember, we have not been ignorant yet of another machine. There was another machine that was bought during the current year. And that machine which was bought during the current year, remember it was machine D. So now there's still another machine that we need to take it into consideration. So now let us first respond to this question and complete it. So now we see our total accumulated depreciation as at 31st of December in the year 2012 or as 1st of January 2013. Total accumulated depreciation. Accumulated depreciation as at first of January in the year twenty thirteen equals three hundred and sixty thousand rands plus two hundred and seventy five thousand rands. I hope you still remember these figures. Uh, no, it's not 360, it's 280,000, sorry. It's 280,000. 360 is the total. It's 280,000. Plus 275,000. Confirm that, yes, 275,000. So the sum of the two will give us the opening balance of the accumulated depreciation. 275,000 rands plus 280,000 rands. This gives me... 555,000 rands. So this is the opening balance on the 1st of January in the year 2013. In the year 2013. My 13 does not look good there. In the year 2013. <clears throat> so now we have a uh, touch base on that too. Then now another or the first important part now we are beginning to do the full asset disposal. As I said to you that the main focus should be on the asset that was disposed. And what asset was disposed? Machinery. So what we need to do, even if it's not required, these are my workings. Machinery at cost. You must do the ledger account of the machine at cost. All the time, machine, even if this is not required. Then after you have done this, you must do the ledger account for accumulated depreciation. Accumulated depreciation for the disposed machine. In fact, for machine, not for the, for the disposed asset. Uh, depreciation for machinery. If the asset disposed is machine, then it must be for all the machines, not only for the one that was disposed. When I'm saying for the disposed asset. Then after we have to do asset disposal. And this one is required. But even if this is not required, very important that you must touch with the asset at cost. 
for the asset that was disposed. These are my workings. I want to emphasize this. Uh, some of this is not required. This is not required as a ledger account, but it's good workings for understanding of this topic very comprehensively. So now asset increase on the debit side and the balance of assets in this case will always be on the debit side. And the opening balance is 1,270,000 rands. And now if we have that, we have taken it into account, which is the total, remember, that was given to us. The opening balance of 1,270,000 for the assets, total of all the assets, including the one that was disposed. And take note that in that 1,270,000, the total of or the cost of uh, 750,000 for machine D was not yet included. And that is good because we don't want the machine that was bought during the current year to form part and parcel of the opening balance because it was not there at the beginning of the year. But we know that machine A was sold. So now machine A must be removed on the credit side or reduce our assets on the credit side because it is no longer in the business. So now we have to remove machine um, D, which is asset disposal, become the contra entry. Why do we say asset disposal? Because machine B was sold. And now if this machine was sold, we need to remove it at its cost price. Let us check which uh, of this may oh, it was machine a not machine b and now we need to determine or check the cost of machine a and the cost of machine a was eight hundred and fifty thousand. remember this eight fifty thousand is included in that opening balance because the total of eight fifty thousand plus four hundred and twenty thousand gives us one million two seventy thousand so now that one million two seventy thousand is then is the opening balance so now we need to remove this asset on the credit side by recording the cost price or derecognizing the cost price which was on the debit side. Then another question is, was there any other machine that was bought during the current year? The answer will be, yes, there was a machine that was bought during the current year. And the cost of that machine was 750,000 rands. And let us check if was this machine bought for cash or on credit. And they did tell us that on the same date, the machine that was costing 750000 was bought. Now, is this for cash or credit? We don't know. It's not clearly uh, stated. So now we can perhaps assume it to be cash, although the price is very, is very high, not necessarily expensive. So now we can say debtors or creditors, depending or slash creditors. So now let us say bank slash creditors to record uh, the asset that was bought during the current year and there was no other asset in terms of machinery that was bought during the current year and i want to emphasize on this in this ledger account we record at the cost price no selling price please i know some students they will have a um, a uh, a uh, uh, a view of recording the 90,000 because machine A was sold at a loss of 90,000. No, a loss will go to the asset disposal. The 90,000 is even if you are given the selling price, the selling price is not supposed to be recorded when you de recognizing the asset at the cost price. Even if there was a selling price which will be able to discover, that would not have to be taken into consideration. So now we can uh, balance this ledger account by taking the total of the bigger side. So now we'll have 1,270,000 plus 750,000. And this, okay, again, 1,270,000 plus 750,000. Plus 750,000, and this gives us 2,020,000 rands. This gives us 2,020,000 rands. This is 2,020,000 rands. Then, after we will have our balance carried down.
we will have our balance carried down and our balance carried down we we'll have to deduct the cost of 850,000 then after this will give us 1,170,000 one million one seventy thousand and one million one seventy thousand becomes a balance brought down balance brought down so now this ledger account is complete and done this will be very useful when we do the under the column of the machinery in the property plant and equipment note then the second ledger account is accumulated depreciation this ledger account has an opening balance on the credit side and the opening balance was already given we have already calculated as 555,000 rands if you still remember that there was an opening balance that we were required to calculate and that opening balance was 555,000 on the 1st of January in the year 2013, beginning of the current year, which was made of all the depreciation for machinery A from the year 2009, 2010, 2011, and 2012. And the total was 280,000. Then after we went to machine B, and we said machine B was bought in the year 2010, Depreciation for 2010 was 75,000, 2011, 100,000, 2012, 100,000. And that became 275,000. And that is the total opening balance. When we add both of these, 275,000 and 280,000 became the opening balance in the year 2013, which is the closing balance for the year 2012. So now... That is why I take that opening balance. Then after we have to now record depreciation of the machinery, all of them uh, at the beginning of the, or at the end of the current year, all of the depreciations. So now there was a depreciation for the current year, which I have already recognized for you. For the year, remember current year is 2013 depreciation. There was 80,000 for machine A, and there was 100,000 for machine B. This is 2013. This is 100,000. So now it will be 80,000 and 100,000. Then we have to show the calculations. 80,000 plus 100,000. And this will give us 180,000 rands. Now the reason why we don't calculate depreciation for machine D is because machine D was bought at the end of the current year. But if machine D was bought during the current year, therefore now the depreciation for machine D would have to be calculated and be added under the depreciation for the current year. But because of the fact that it was bought at the end of the year, therefore now on the last day of the year, there's no depreciation to be accounted for the current year. Now, we know that the depreciation for machine A, which is sold, is already included in that opening balance. And another 80,000 for the current year is here. So now we don't need the accumulated depreciation for machine A because machine A was sold. So now that means the total accumulated depreciation for machine A including the current year, which came up to 360,000, must be removed from the books of the business. Remember, when we sold machine A under the machinery at cost ledger account, we removed the cost of machine A on the credit side, and that was 850,000. So now we have removed the cost price of that machine. Now we still have to remove the accumulated depreciation for this machine. Therefore now, the total of all the depreciations for machine A up to the date this machine was uh, sold must be removed on the debit side. And the contra entry or the reason why we record it on the debit side or we did recognize it because the asset was disposed. That is why the contra entry becomes asset disposal. Remember in accounting, there is a basic accounting principle that says for every debit entry, there should be or there must be a corresponding entry of the equivalent or the same amount. So now that means 
the asset disposal that was recorded on the debit side of the machinery at cost ledger account where we removed the cost price must be recorded on the debit side of the asset disposal and that must be 850,000 and the contra entry must be machinery because that is machinery that was sold then on the credit side for every debit entry there should be a credit entry so now that 360,000 should be recorded on the should be recorded on the debit on the debit side or on the credit side of the asset disposal account so now we have machinery then on the credit side we record the total accumulated depreciation of 360,000 and the contra entry will be accumulated depreciation please when you write for exams don't use abbreviation it's only because of the fact that uh, i have a limited space so this is the limiting factor for cost accounting those who love cost accounting so now it's because of the limited space now we have recorded most of that which we need to record in the ledger accounts and uh, i think we have recorded all of them then i can balance this ledger account from this stage now the bigger side in this ledger account will always be on the credit side which is 555,000 plus 180,000 this will be 735,000 rents 735,000 rents minus 360,000 rents it gives me 375,000 rents 735,000 rents is the total then this becomes a balance carry down and the same balance that you carry down you bring it down to the credit side 375,000 rents balance that we bring it down so now we have covered all that needs to be covered so far with this ledger accounts just to confirm the calculation 555,000 plus 180,000 that is 735 minus 360,000 is 375,000 rands now just to give you some small tips that will help us when we do the PPE note things that you need to note this is an opening balance this is closing balance this is movements during the year these are the entry that took place during the year and you'll see all of that when we do the asset disposal this again is an opening balance it does not change this is and this should be used as the net of the movements these two this will lead to the carrying amount then after this is also movements depreciation during the year and this is closing balance and opening balance movement must remain movements closing balance must remain the closing balance so we just copy and paste these figures now a uh, closing or balancing now or closing here yeah, the asset disposal we then in this case need to do this in in different ways first we have sold the machine a and i want to calculate the carrying value or the carrying amount of machine a the machine that was sold the cost of machine a is 850000 and if i say cost minus accumulated depreciation of 360000 meaning all the depreciation until the day this asset was sold the 360000 that we have already taken into account if i minus that from the cost price this will give me what we call the carrying value or carrying amount so let us check how much is the carrying amount for this uh, machine so 850000 
minus 360,000. It gives me 490,000 rands. So the carrying value or the carrying amount of this machine is 490,000, meaning the value of machine A. Let me clarify that is machine A. The carrying value of machine A or carrying amount of machine A at the date it was sold, it was 490,000. This was the value of this machine, 490,000 at the date it was sold. But we don't know how much was it sold for. But one thing we know is that we made a loss. So now that means the selling price, as I said to you, must have been lower than the carrying value by 90,000. So now that means the selling price for this uh, must have been 400,000 rands. Why am I saying 400,000 rands? Is because the carrying amount of 490,000 must have been greater than the selling price by 90,000. So now for me to determine the selling price, I must say the carrying amount minus the loss because the loss was 90,000. So if you take the selling price, you minus the loss that is given, you get to the selling price. So now that means if we're given the selling price, we we're just going to record the selling price on the credit side as, and we say 400,000 rands. If the selling price was given, this could have been, I think it was sold for cash. So if the selling price was given, we are going to record that as bank on the credit side of the asset disposal. Then after we say 360,000 plus 400,000 of the selling price, it gives us 400,000. Minus 850,000. Uh, let me check. Okay, 360,000 plus 400,000. It gives us 760,000 minus 850,000 the difference is 90,000 we can see that so now the difference will fall on the smaller side so the difference of 90,000 will indicate that it's a loss if the difference a uh, loss on disposal if the difference falls on the credit side because a loss is an expense uh, uh, or an income statement item and a loss increases on the debit side so now when we record this in a lost ledger account it will be on the debit side but in this case we were already given the loss so now we were looking for the selling price meaning the bank amount the amount by which this asset was sold for so now how will that happen remember we've already done it already it just to calculate things in from different perspective so now in this case that will mean we'll have to say now the credit side is 360,000 plus 90,000 of the loss. And this gives us 450,000 minus 850,000. That will give us 400,000 as the selling price. So either way, it will be still correct. Remember, you might next time be given the selling price, not the loss. And sometimes you might be given the profit and uh, not the selling price. So now you must always know if you are given a profit, if let us say this was a profit, not a loss. If this was a profit, therefore now what do you do? You get the carrying amount of the asset up to the date it was sold. Then you say carrying amount plus the profit. If it's a profit, you plus it to the carrying amount in order for you to get to the selling price. But if you are calculating the selling price, for an asset that was sold at a loss, you say the carrying amount or the carrying value minus the loss in order for you to get to the selling price. And I think I've clarified it enough. Please try to pause and repeat what I'm saying if perhaps you don't get me or you can contact me on my email or on my LinkedIn. All my details, I think they are all there on my, in fact, Facebook account to get all other further clarities if you need uh, so then now uh, we have the bigger side being 810,000. Remember, if the difference uh, or if the bigger side was the credit side, then the difference would have to fall on the debit side. And if the difference falls on the debit side, that means 
will have to record that as a profit on disposal. Profit on disposal is on the debit side. I'm just writing there's no amount in this case. But a loss on disposal is on the credit side. Always, not sometimes. So now that we have covered this, then now we are at the right stage to do one column of the asset dispo of the property plant and equipment because the disposed asset now has been taken already into consideration so now let me then continue on that same note i will still go to vehicles don't worry about that the main focus is the asset that was disposed so now we do property plant and equipment note. Property plant and equipment note. Property plant and equipment note. Property plant and equipment note as at 31st of December 2013. Then now we have three or two columns only for the assets that we have. The next one will be the total column. The one that we start with is machinery. Another one that we have is vehicles. Another one that we have is the total. Then after we draw the line to make it a little bit neat. The first thing we start with is the carrying amount. And the carrying amount is at the 1st of January 2013. Very important to note that. Then after we have the cost at the beginning of the year and accumulated depreciation. The format is very important. Accumulated depreciation. Format is very important. As I said to you, don't write abbreviation. There will always be enough space for you to write. Squeeze it as long everything is there. Very important to know that there is a line above the cost. And there is a line just below the accumulated depreciation. Then after we have what you call movements. We have what you call movements. Everything that took place during the current year is recorded here. And under movements we have additions. Additions at cost. That must be noted is at the cost price. Disposals at carrying value, very important. Then after we have depreciation. Uh, at perhaps uh, another level, we have to take into account revaluation surplus. Then we draw a line here so that our movements are recorded separately. At the end of the year, we have carrying amount. We have carrying amount. At 31st of December 2013. Then we have the cost price. And they accumulated. Depreciation at the end of the year and also there is a line here and there is also a line here so now this is how this note looks like very important to note from here to here this is opening balances everything that took place beginning of the year from here until here, 
This is current year or during the year. Current or during the year. Everything that took place current year or during the year. And this is closing balance. This is closing balance. So now, that is very important to note. Opening balances on top, whatever happened during the years in the middle, under movements, and at the end of the year, that becomes the closing balances. So now we will just go to the ledger accounts for the machinery to make things very easy for us. There was an opening balance in the ledger account for machinery. And that opening balance was... 1,270,000. We take that opening balance, we paste it as it's supposed to be. So now we record that as an opening balance, 1,270,000 opening balance from the ledger account. Then after we go to accumulated depreciation ledger account, take note, we record the opening balance of 555,000 rands. Where is that coming from? There was an opening balance 555,000 rands under the accumulated depreciation. Then after we go to the closing balance in the ledger account. Closing balance in the ledger account of machinery. There was a closing balance of 1,170,000. So we just take the closing balance, we paste it under the closing balance. I'll go to the movements. We have closing balance 1,170,000. Then again, we go to the accumulated depreciation closing balance ledger account. And we take only the closing balance. The closing balance was 375,000 rands. And we take it, we paste it under the closing balance. 375,000 rands. So now we then have to go to the movements now and we say, was there anything that was bought during the year, additions or purchases or acquisition during the year? Yes. Remember, we bought a machinery at the cost of 750000 That will be additions at cost. So we record this as additions for 750,000 rands. Disposals at carrying value, meaning the machine that was disposed must be recorded at carrying value. Now I have removed the, uh, that calculation at the bottom there where I was doing my workings. But my carrying value of machine A that was disposed, it was 850,000 cost price minus accumulated depreciation for this machine and if you still remember this gave us a figure of 850,000 minus 360,000 and it was 490,000 so now disposals in the PPE note are recorded at carrying value so now this is the amount that I uh, was looking for carrying value of 490,000 Disposals are recognized as negative because the asset is removed or being removed from the books of the business. Then after we record depreciation and also depreciation must be negative. Remember now, depreciation will be under the ledger account called accumulated depreciation. We take that depreciation for the current year of uh, 180,000. I don't know why I said balance here. It must have just been a mistake. This will be depreciation. Not balance. Uh, if you have seen it before, thank you. That show that at least you are focusing. Now we have that depreciation of 180,000 that we recognize it in this uh, PPE note. So now with regard to the machinery we are done, I just have to totalize 1,270,000 minus 555,000. Then this will give me 715,000 rands. Then I go to my movements, 750,000 minus 490,000 minus 180,000. 
this gives me 80,000 rands. 80,000 rands. Then I go to the closing balance, which is 1,170,000 minus 375,000 rands. This gives me 795,000 rands. This is the value of the assets in machinery carrying value, all of them at the end of the year. So now we have to go to the vehicles now. Vehicles column. Remember, there was no vehicle disposed. And another thing that is very important before I go to vehicles, sorry for that, is the fact that if we say opening balance plus the net of the movements, this should give us equal to the closing balance. Let us test that. Opening balance seven fifteen thousand plus eighty thousand. It is seven ninety five thousand. So that means we have done a uh, grace in terms of our calculations. We were very accurate and very consistent in our workings. So now always uh, take that into consideration, just as a test. It's not necessarily all the time meaning that you are 100% correct. It might mean that you were uh, uh, consistent in your recordings. Then now we go to our vehicles and we look for the opening balance. Remember, we have not done any calculation regarding the vehicles because there was no disposal. I said, you don't have to focus that much. Focus on the asset that was disposed which is machine number one and number four that was our main focus honestly we just did number one and number four so now we go to number two and number three which is the asset that was not disposed then now we say vehicles are depreciated at 20 percent per annum using the diminishing balance method the vehicle x shown on the above drive balance was bought when on the 30th of june in the year 2012 just last year so we just need depreciation for six months that becomes opening balance in our property plant and equipment note and there was only those vehicles that were in the general balance at the cost of 500,000 rands so we just record that at the cost of the vehicles 500,000 rands opening balance then now uh, we need to calculate our accumulated depreciation. So now we are under vehicles now, which is vehicle X. Vehicle X was bought in 2012. The cost of vehicle X was 500,000 rands. Remember, they are using diminishing balance method. We need to say minus accumulated depreciation. But this asset was bought in the year 2012. So by the year 2012, there was no accumulated depreciation yet. So we can just say minus zero. So now that will give us the same 500,000 rands. Then we take into account the useful life of this asset. Oh, we are not given directly the useful life, but 20%. And 20% is five years, if you did not know. So now, meaning it will be times this by 20%. Then now uh, we get to our depreciation for the full year. 500,000 times by 0 0.2. It gives us 100,000 rands at the depreciation for the full year. But this vehicle X was bought at the end of June, meaning depreciation must be for six months in the year 2012. So now we times this by six over. 12, then this will obviously give us 50,000 rands. 50,000 rands is the depreciation at the end of uh, December 2012. And that becomes the opening balance in the year 2013. So now that is the only amount we have at the depreciation with regards to motor vehicles. Therefore, now the opening carrying amount becomes 450,000 rands. Then we proceed now, we have done the opening part of the asset because that was the only motor vehicle that we had 
previous years, which we calculated the opening accumulated and recorded the opening cost of the amount of 500,000 rands. So now let us proceed on that same note. Now this part is uh, done and dusted, How, or not dusted, is done so far, but we need depreciation for the year 2013 now for this vehicle. We need not to forget that. So now for the year 2013, it will be the cost of 500,000 rands minus the residual value of, uh, sorry, minus accumulated depreciation now of 50,000, that one. Therefore, now this will give us 450,000 that we have already calculated. We times this by 20%. This vehicle was not sold. So now 450,000 rands times by 0 0.2 it will give us an amount of 90,000 rands. So now the depreciation for vehicle X for the year 2013, it will be 90,000 rands. Let us look if maybe there are other vehicles that were bought during the year that we still need to account for depreciation or not. So now this part is done, but not yet completely, completely recorded. Then on the 30th, which is number three, on the 30th of June, six months before the end of the current year, on the 30th of June 2013, vehicle Y was purchased for 250,000 cash. When did this purchase take place? During the year. Anything that took place during the year is under additions in the property plant and equipment note. So now under additions, we should add that motor vehicle at the cost of 250,000 rands. That's the first thing to take into account. Then after we say, okay, this was bought at the end of June, meaning the depreciation for vehicle Y will be for six months in the current year, and the cost was 250,000. And they say this entry has not yet been recorded in the records as at 31st of December in the year 2013. <clears throat> so now that means we still have to account for motor vehicle Y that was acquired during the current financial period. So now we go to vehicle Y. And vehicle Y depreciation for the year 2013. In the year the asset is bought, there will be no accumulated depreciation. So now we have nothing to subtract because vehicles, remember, they are using diminishing balance method. So we multiply this by 20% and we realize or find out that the depreciation for the full year 2013 is 50,000 for the full year. But now we need it only for six months because this asset was in the business only for six months. So now if we times this by six, which is 0 0.5, it will definitely give us 25,000. Friends, remember 0 0.5 is half and 6 over 12 is also half. So now that means the depreciation total for the current year will be a sum of 90,000 for vehicle X and 25,000 for vehicle Y. If we add the two, let us see how much do we get the depreciation for the vehicles in the current year. 90,000 plus 25,000, this gives us 115,000 rands depreciation for all the vehicles for the year 2013. The one that must be recorded under depreciation in the property plant and equipment note. 115,000 must be the correct depreciation. So now there was no disposal of motor vehicle, meaning the vehicles were not sold. Then now from here, we can calculate the closing balance. And for us to calculate the closing balance is very easy in the case where the asset was not disclosed. So now how do we do it? We just say opening balance plus movements is equal to closing balance. Very easy. Opening balance plus net of the movements. I know opening balance, yes, plus movement that will give us closing balance. Meaning, <clears throat> with regard to the cost of the vehicle, we have 500,000 of the opening balance plus the vehicle that was bought during the year. That will give us the balance of vehicles at the end of the year. 
thousand rands. <clears throat> then after with regards to accumulated depreciation, we still say open a balance plus depreciation for the current year will give us closing balance. So that's how easy it is to calculate the closing balance in the case where the asset was not disposed. So now 50,000, 50,000 plus 115,000 will give me 165,000 rands. <clears throat> then after 165 minus 750,000, this gives me 585,000 rands. 585,000 rands plus 795,000 uh, minus not plus which is the addition at the end it is 1 million 380,000 rands uh, the net carrying amount then now I'm just calculating the totals now for every column uh, we have the opening accumulating amount, which is seven fifteen thousand plus four hundred and fifty thousand. This gives me, sorry. This gives me one million one hundred and sixty-five thousand. One million one hundred and sixty-five thousand. One million two hundred and seventy thousand. Plus five hundred thousand. This is cost one million seven hundred and seventy thousand. Total accumulated five hundred and fifty five thousand plus fifty thousand. It is negative six hundred and five thousand rands. And then after we have 250,000 minus 115,000, this is 135,000 plus 80,000. The total is 215,000 rands. <clears throat> Next one is 750,000 plus 250,000. This is just one million. Another one will be negative four hundred and ninety thousand. Another one will be hundred and eighty thousand plus hundred and fifteen thousand. Negative two hundred and ninety five thousand. Uh, then after we go to the closing cost. 1,170,000 plus 750,000 rands. It gives me 1,920,000. 1,920,000 plus 750,000. Then the closing carrying amount is 375,000 plus 165,000 rands. That gives me 540,000 rands. So now, obviously, when I say 540,000 minus 1,920,000, it should give me the same 1,380,000. I want to change the color for this because it's very, very important figure to note. 1,380,000. Why the 1,030,000 is very important, not to say other figures are not important, because for you to get there, you need to have calculated all other figures. When we do the ledger account, no, when we do the statement of financial position, under property, plant, and equipment, line item, under non-current assets, this is the figure that must be recorded there. And when we do the income statement, this figure of 295,000 rands must appear there under the depreciation total that amount as is. So now the note we have mastered and completed. 
So now let us go to all other short questions now and see what is it that we still have to do. This one is done and dusted. Remember the amount for this was 510,55,000 rents. Can't you do the kidding amount for Vagel X as 31st of December 2013? That is not yet done. Uh, Vagel X. Vagel X. Vagel X. Let us go and check. Vagel X. Okay, here is Vagel X. Kidding amount of Vagel X will be the cost. The cost of Vagel X is 500,000. Minus depreciation for the first year, which is 50,000. Minus for the second year, which is 90,000. Then after, let us see how much do we get as the carrying amount for this vehicle. Sorry for the fact that I'm just squeezing the calculations. As long as you see where the calculation is. 500,000. Minus 50,000. Minus 90,000. So the carrying amount will be 360,000 rands at the end of December in the year 2012. So now we have uh, calculated that which was part of the requirements. 360,000. This was number B. So we have done that too. So let us look for another requirement, which was to record all the general entries for vehicles transaction for the year 2012 and for the year 2013. So now we need to go and check what was there in 2012. 2012, there was depreciation, if you still remember. Depreciation of 2012 amounted to 50,000. So now we need to record that general entry for depreciation and depreciation was 50,000 rents then the contra entry will be accumulated depreciation accumulated depreciation for vehicles and the amount is 50,000 rents and in 2013 now this was 2012. In 2013, there was a vehicle that was bought at the for cash. So now we have to increase our vehicles. And we created our bank. If you still remember, the cost of the vehicle was 250000 That was for 2013. Yeah, that confirm if that was for 2013. Yes, in 2013, we bought vehicle Y at the cost of 250,000. So now, again in 2013, we need to record all the depreciations that we have already recorded in the PPE note. Depreciation, then after accumulated depreciation for the current year, all of them. Accumulated depreciation. And that was the total depreciation for the current year for both assets or for both uh, vehicles, 115,000. Not very far away. So now this will be the general interest that we were required to record under number C. Under number C. Then we go and look for another requirement. That's to ensure that we have done all of them. We were required to prepare the asset disposal account for machine A. We have done the asset disposal account for machine A and there the asset disposal. It is done and dusted. Number D is also done. Let us check another one that might be missing. Number E is the property plant and equipment note. We have done that 10 marks and we have nailed it all. So this was number E. So now I want to stop here also due to the time constraints uh, with regard to this video. The other part of the question is not uh, that much complex. 
let me check if perhaps is there any important thing that I should have emphasized that I did not. So question two is uh, not that much of a transmesh, but I'll just read it through. Uh, okay, yeah, we have completed it all. Question two, it says only out of two marks. Take note, only two marks. That is short marks to grab. So now they say calculate the cost of the vehicle to be used for transporting fresh fruit and vegetables if the business paid the following amounts in connection with it on the 1st of August. These are the costs that we incurred invoice price. So now we need to calculate the cost that will be capitalized. Invoice roof proofing, which is 4.5, seat covers, uh, fuel 2.3, import duties, number plate. So now which of the costs to be capitalized, we just take them. Invoice obviously will be capitalized the uh, rust roofing because we don't want our fruit and veg to have the rust so the cost of putting the roof will be capitalized and seat covers are not important so you will not include the seat covers they don't change anything the car will still be moving it's not protecting uh, the fruit and the veg which is our main product fuel is just an expense on a monthly basis there will be fuel cost Import duties of 5,000, that will be taken into account because cost that we incur to import uh, uh, the, the, the motor vehicle. Number plate will be the cost a motor vehicle cannot move or it's not legally allowed to move without the number plate. So it will be half a mark, it will be half a mark, it will be half a mark, and this will be half a mark and you get your two marks. In otherwise, you just write this, then you only ignore these two. That's what you do. You Then after you get to the total, let us check how much will be the total cost to be capitalized. So now cost to be capitalized will be 420,000 plus 4,500 plus 5,000 plus 2,500 which is 432,000 rands. So now this will be a total of 432,000 rands. This will be the total cost of this motor vehicle. With all that, guys, being said, allow me to say, let the peace of God be with you. Shalom. Thank you.